Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria Avi and on this channel I do nursing vlogs and nursing tips and nursing advice and as part of my student nurse week I pose a question to you guys asking you guys to give me video suggestions on topics that I should cover over the next seven days. So as requested I will be doing a video on maths in nursing. Just start off with saying that there is nothing to worry about. I know for those, for, so for some of my course mates who didn't you know, do well at the GCSE maths or who didn't do A level maths. They, some of them did struggle with basic, you know, maths calculations and nursing practice. But I will tell you that I can say that at my university, there was so much support to ensure that, you know, everyone, you know, felt comfortable doing maths calculations, as well as, you know, your lecturers providing you with support. Your mentors on placement will also provide you with support as well. And as part of my university degree, um, we have like the Pebble Pad portfolio. And as part of every practice placement, our mentors have to put up, um, they have to set us up to 10 maths um, calculations. We have to work them out. And if you find, if you're struggling with them, your mentor has to like talk them through with you. And I've never known anyone to be discontinued from the nursing program because their maths wasn't up to par. Like I've said, there's loads of support out there for you guys. And I feel like if you have, you know, done well at your GCSE maths, or if you've even gone as far as to, done, to do A-level maths, you're not going to have any problems. I know, like, um, from the maths calculations, if I'm honest, I agree with, if anybody's, like, subscribed to YouTube with Dr. Bass, um, I agree with him when he says that um, the maths calculations in nursing practice, they are very basic. Um, I'd say average, they're probably about, I won't go as low as, say, maybe year nine, but I'd say maybe they're, like, GS GCSE maths calculations. But what you have to remember is converting from micrograms to milligrams converted from grams to kilograms from current from just converting from different weight measurements as long as you've got that and you know how to convert and when to convert in the mass calculations you've got it all you've got it all down another tip i'll give to you guys as well is don't get i was going to say don't get finessed don't get don't get confused by the additional information they give you for example they say they might say Nana Pat is an 82 year old lady. She weighs 69 kilograms because in the past two weeks she's been losing weight. The doctor prescribes her one gram of paracetamol. However, the tablet comes in two milligrams per tablet. How many tablets would you give her? That's not a real life example. That wouldn't happen in real life because why would it be two milligrams per tablet when you have to give one gram? That just wouldn't make sense. But don't get confused by all the additional information. In this question, all you need to know is what the doctor's prescribed her, which is the one gram, and then the um, the fact that there are two milligrams in each tablet. You don't need to know her age. You don't need to know, um, solely for this maths calculation, you don't need to know her age. You don't need to know that she's been losing weight for the past two weeks. You don't need to know any of that. Don't get confused with the additional information that they might put in in exams that they might put in the maths questions. Just look at the key bits of information that you need, not all the numbers that they give you in the question you will need. You won't need all the numbers, you'll just need a handful. So it's knowing what numbers you will need and if you need to convert, knowing how to convert and knowing when to convert. Now I'm gonna maybe, I've got my book again with you because I don't wanna miss out any useful information. But now I'm going to share with you three maths calculations that I um, received um, that I had to work out when I was in stage one, which is basically year one of my nursing practice. And like I said, for my university, for each practice placement, your mentor has to give you at least, I mean, maximum 10 um, drug calculations that you have to work out. And I've basically gone back to my year one portfolio, my year one pebble pad, portf pebble pad portfolio, and I've literally got out three maths questions that my first mentor asked me. So the first question was, the patient has problems swallowing tablets. Remember what I said about additional information you don't need? Patient has problems swallowing tablets. The doctor has prescribed liquid paracetamol, one gram. Each five mils contains 250 milligrams. How many mils would you give? And the answer is 20 mils. You need to know how to convert back and forth, and you also need to know what bits of information you need. The second question that I was given, well, this, this is just three questions that I've taken out of some of the questions I was asked, is how long will it take to infuse one litre of saline at the rate of 250 mils per hour? And the answer for this is four hours. The third question is, a patient is prescribed 50 milligrams of IV furosemide. You are helping to prepare it. Furosemide IV is presented in 20 milligrams per two mil vials. How many mils in total do you need? And the answer is five mils. I feel like these questions that I was given are as basic 
as it's going to get in real life. Obviously, you will get the a patient to subscribe one gram of paracetamol. Um, the tablets come in 500 milligrams. How many tablets do you need to give? But I feel like this is kind of like the average and the basic level. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of does, it does, in some situations, it does get more complicated, especially when you're talking about units. For some strange reason, I kind of struggled with, like I did well at GCSE maths and I took A-level maths for a bit, but I kind of struggled with um, units in first year. But as soon as my mentor sat, literally properly sat down with me, took out a glucose syringe and explained it to me step by step, then I was like, oh my gosh, this is so simple, like it was literally like a light bulb lit in my head. When it comes to like things like converting moles and converting concentrations, it can um, it can get a bit complicated. But like I said, because you'll be doing this all the time, you will get used to it and it's gonna become as easy as one, two, three. Another thing I will say is that when drug calculations get very, when the, they can get complicated, I'm not gonna lie to you. When drug, cal but that's in rare sub substances, that's in rare, not rare circumstances, but it's not an, everyday occurrence but it depends on the type of environment that you are in so on some wards they might be given really complicated IV drugs and on other wards they might not even be doing any IV drugs or any really complicated drug calculations but in environments where you are doing really complicated drug environments more than likely that ward or that department will have some sort of policy when they say two nurses have to work together to calculate that before they can give the drug. I know for um, in some in some departments for control drugs or for drugs that require you know quite complicated mass calculations you need to have at least two registered nurses to you know work out the drug calculation before you give it to the before you give it to the patients and in some circumstances I've also seen I actually saw this once actually where the drug it wasn't licensed for use for what it was given if that makes I don't want to overcomplicate it. <laughs> I don't want to overcomplicate it because I know a lot of you guys are pre-nursing students or first year students. But um, the drug, say for example, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a respiratory ward. This drug is normally prescribed, I believe, for eye drops. But for this instance, this guy had to have some sort of injection into his vein or he had to swallow it. I, ca I can't remember exactly, but the way the drug was prescribed wasn't how it was licensed. And because of that, as well as it being, you know, a complicated drug that you had to calculate, it had to be two registered nurses and it also had to be the doctor who prescribed it. So there were three members of staff, two registered nurses and the doctor who prescribed it. They actually had to, all three of them, come together, you know, work out the drug calculation from the prescription and then give it to the patient. So there's always, you know, that support there for you. Like I've said, if you have any, any trouble or, you know, any any difficulties with the mass calculations they will be trust me there will be someone at your university who will be able to sit down with you and explain it to you step by step and like I said with anything in life the more you do it the better you'll get at it so I hope this has been helpful I will be putting down maybe two or three links to some videos that I found on YouTube who go into more detail about you know the maths and the dosage drug dosage calculations that you're likely to find in your nursing practice so thank you guys so much for watching this video I do hope this video was helpful and I do hope the links that I will be putting down for you will also help to fill the void that some of you guys might be experiencing right now and I'll see you in my next video which is tomorrow so this is going up today on the Friday so I'll see you guys in my next video tomorrow and I think tomorrow yeah Saturday is the last day I believe correct me if I'm wrong so if you have any more video suggestions make sure you put it in the comments box below and I will be more than likely to do a video on it so I'll see you guys tomorrow bye